So we are in the studio today comparing the Surface Laptop Studio with the new MacBook 14 inch. Let's dive in and see which one of these is a bad boy. I saw this tweet the other day and it said, one of these is the future of laptop computers, the other is a Surface Laptop Studio. And I get it, but I think it's a little harsh. You know, Apple brings back MagSafe and we all sing and dance about it. Microsoft has had MagSafe for years. The Surface Dock has been magnetic. We don't show many love for it. Okay, so we got the SD card back. I get it, that's cool. This doesn't have an SD card, but it has Thunderbolt 4 USB-C, just the same as a MacBook Pro. So other than SD, the ports are pretty much the same. Similar screen sizes, 16 gig, 512. This starts at 16 gig, 256. But this starts at two grand, this starts at 1600, so $400 difference. I can go to a 512 for 1799, so $200 less. Still an i5 chip. If I want the i7, I'm gonna creep up to 2099, but I'm gonna get dedicated graphics. We're not gonna talk about Mac OS and Windows 11. You can check those things out separately. I've got a video on Windows 11 that I did a few weeks ago. You can see some of my highlights there. Again, Mac OS gets a lot of love, but Windows 11 has done a great job and it's a great operating system. In a lot of ways, I actually enjoy using Windows more than Mac sometimes. It's a lot more flexible. And at the end of the day, for all of us now, it's about the apps that we use more than the OS that we use them on. If I'm using HubSpot, I'm in a browser. If I'm using Gmail, I'm in a browser. If I'm using ClickUp for my workflow and productivity, I can download the app on both of them or I can use it in a browser. So ultimately, for the majority of our lives, we are all using glorified Chromebooks. We are in browsers doing most of the things we do with the exception of Power Apps. So what do I think about these two machines? If somebody said to me, Mike, I wanna spend about 14, 1500 bucks on a computer, well, this just left the table, folks. There's no option. If somebody says I wanna spend about two grand, okay, now it comes back into play. But this has a very unique, specific use case, and I talk about that in my review of the MacBook Pros, so you can go check that out. So let's talk about performance. I've used them daily, normal everyday, email, web browsing, all that kind of stuff, no difference. 16 gig M1 Pro, no difference for me compared to my regular old MacBook Pro with an M1. Probably something to do with the single core performance. And I hear you, you're screaming at the screen, but Mike, Mike, these are pro level machines. All right, let me, let me take that bet and let me just, just throw one back at you. Because this one is a little bit more flexible and it might seem weird, it might be a little bit of a gimmick, being able to put it in tent mode Taking away the keyboard and the distraction of the keyboard, I know it sounds weird, but I think they're onto something. It's a really interesting proposition. And then being able to flatten it down, for a lot of people, this is an interesting use case. I know it's not quite a tablet, but if I wanna draw and sketch, I can do something here that is physically impossible here. Apple's answer is go spend another $1,000 and buy an iPad Pro. So now you're at $3,000 compared to maybe $15.99, maybe $17.99, definitely no more than $20.99 if you want the i7 with the dedicated graphics. So price is a major factor here because that's a big difference for a lot of folks. Usability-wise, look, is the battery life better on the MacBook? Absolutely, okay? Windows, please fix your battery life issues. Intel, please make a chip that has decent battery life. This i7 does not get me through a day in the office doing the things I do as an entrepreneur. And I'm not even on my computer all day. I'm on it, I'm off it, I'm on it, I'm off it. And I just about barely make it through a work day. With the Max, I can get through no problem and I got tons to spare. But I can't only care about one thing so much that I ignore the rest. Okay, does it give off heat? No, the Mac doesn't. The Surface absolutely does. If I'm doing something intensive. But that intensiveness comes with benefits. On Mike's unofficial nine minute 4K video test that we like to render out in Premiere Pro just for grits. The Mac came in at over five and a half minutes. The Surface came in around three and a half minutes and they cost about the same. That's a significant difference in speed. Was it pouring out some heat? Absolutely. Did the vents and the grills and the whatever's underneath do a great job of dissipating the heat? 
Yeah, absolutely they did. They did what they were designed to do. It's a little bit thicker, but overall, this is a really hard comparison for me because unless you hate Windows or hate Mac OS, if you're pretty agnostic about the operating system, for the most part, both of these could work really well for you. If I was choosing between the two and I'm looking at them and I'm looking at ports, I'm looking at things like the notch on the screen, which I just don't like, I'm looking at things like the flexibility of the temp mode and whether or not I will use it every day is one thing, but having the ability to use it is really handy. I honestly think at the $15.99 price point, this is a much more practical buy for most people. I think it's gonna be a great machine. Microsoft knows how to make hardware. It feels nice. The materials feel great. The Apple feels a little softer, if you wanna call it soft, but this still feels really premium. At the $2,000 mark, I would really wrestle between these two. And honestly, hands down right now, I, I don't know which way I would go. I've been a little underwhelmed with the MacBook Pros and I think some of it's because of the hype. I think some of it's because the M1 is still an M1 and it isn't that much superior to a thousand dollar M1. And so I feel like I'm being taken advantage of a little bit to buy the nice new shiny shape and buy the nice new shiny ports and deal with this cheese grater, you know, edges on the back here that they couldn't even be bothered to chamfer off and bevel, which really bugs me when I'm carrying my laptop every single day. I'm not saying this is perfect. I'm not really a fan of this step design either. I wish they could have come up with a better design. They didn't. I'm not overly enamored by it, but it doesn't feel sharp on the corners. It doesn't feel like it's gonna cut into my hands when I'm holding it. And as a design choice, I knew what I was getting into before I bought it because it was there and I could see it. I didn't feel the same about the MacBook. So now I got a surprise and I don't like surprises. I don't like good surprises and I really don't like bad surprises. So let me sum this up for you. If you're looking at these two laptops, if you're a Mac guy, you know you're a Mac guy and I'm probably not talking to you. If you're a Windows gal or guy, then the same applies. But if you're like me and you're in the middle and probably like most people, and the OS isn't quite as important, that you can do all the things you wanna do on both machines, you just want a machine you can use day to day and the simplicity of life, at the mid-teens, it's gonna be surface all the way. You get to $2,000, I think it's a split, and if I was really spending my money now, I don't know that I would go for the MacBook. At $19.99, it's got the GIMP processor. They took away things to make the higher end models look better. It's got the GIMP GPU. They took away some of the cores to make the $24.99 look better. It's got the lower power supply and I gotta pay extra money to upgrade it. I just feel like I'm getting an inferior MacBook experience unless I pay more. And I feel like I'm being a little bit manipulated in that respect to pay more. I don't feel that way on the surface. I feel like Microsoft's given me the best. I feel like they put it all out there. They hit a low price point with a lower spec to help people get into the Surface Laptop Studio if they want to. They came out at two grand with a decent machine with dedicated graphics, comparable to a Dell XPS or something like that. I feel like they're giving me their best efforts. And is it quite you know, as perfect an exterior chassis as a MacBook Pro? No, it probably isn't. But overall, day-to-day -day usability, getting stuff done and doing my work, I think if I was really paying the money right now, I'd probably be going for the Surface Studio. That's my thoughts. Stay tuned for more. I'm gonna be dropping an XPS 15 OLED against the 16 inch MacBook Pro here real soon. If you haven't seen my comparison video uh, of just the MacBooks, go check that one out. If you wanna learn more about Windows 11, go check that one out. We've been busy here at Mike Drops Tech. Really appreciate you giving me your time. Hey, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Help me grow my channel a little bit more. Gotta pay for my new studio that's gonna be coming up soon here on the new videos. And until next time, let's go out there and be amazing.